Welcome. Today we are going to talk about mounting. And sorry to disappoint you, but you're not actually going to get to see me getting on and off of a horse. But I'm going to talk about a bunch of do's and don'ts. Um, over the years, I've watched quite a few videos on the subject. And uh, actually, I did one years ago on the importance of you know, the correct tension on your cinch, not too tight, not too loose, because both can be bad. And uh, I've watched a lot of videos on mounting over the years, and, and recently I watched a couple that, well, they kind of inspired me to do this one because uh, there was a couple of things they talked about. Was, well, the one thing in particular, which I'm going to address is, uh, he talked, one guy said, you do it this way. Another guy said, never do it that way. And the other guy said, I've seen people do it that way, but I have no idea why they do it. So I'm going to talk about that one. I'm also going to talk about a few other little things that, uh, and this would go back to, you know, uh, something I've said before, is be careful what you believe. Uh, particularly on the internet, you can't believe everything that you hear. And, well, even everything you see. Uh, sometimes your eyes can be fooled, sometimes things can be exaggerated, sometimes they can be outright falsified. Uh, even in videos, pictures, you really can't believe much unless you see it in person. And uh, one of the videos that I saw, and uh, it was sort of about mounting, but they were trying to promote using the mounting block, which, by the way, I'm not against that one little bit. And uh, if you actually have the opportunity, use one. However, if you mount properly, you probably don't really need one, which is kind of my point. Uh, mounting blocks aren't bad, no, and using one is a good thing. And, but um, there were some people trying to basically tell you that you're doing it horribly wrong and you're hurting your horse if you don't use a mounting block. I want to show you what they did is they actually had a camera set up directly behind the horse, showing you a view from the back end of the saddle or right from the rump of the horse and that actually kind of exaggerates the movement because the back end of the saddle has basically got no weight on it there's nothing holding it down unless you're using a rear cinch and have it done up fairly tight and to top it off they did it in slow motion which really made it look like it was worse than it was so i'm just going to give you a quick example here of Good boy. A little more. A little more. Now this is basically the view that they were giving you. Now this is not quite dead center, but that's okay. Close enough. But I just want to show you that uh, one, one finger I can pick the saddle up. Uh, look how much it can move side to side. You know, uh, and they, of course, from that angle, it looks far, far worse than it is. So, uh, you know, that's one of those things that don't, you know, that two fingers, I can move the saddle around like that. So, uh, you know, if you see a video where somebody is, you know, showing you uh, how bad it can be, well, be careful what you're watching. They could be exaggerating things just a little bit. I'm actually going to move him over just a little further. Ooh, there we go. Good man. Okay, uh, from this angle, you get to see a little bit better what I want to show you. Uh, the the subject that uh, you're probably still wondering what the heck I'm talking about that the other guys disagreed on or didn't know about or some said yes, some said no. Uh, actually, the one video where I saw the guy do it is the only video I've ever seen anybody do it with a Western saddle. I have seen it done with an English saddle, and I think it's more commonly done with them because it would certainly be much easier. Let me explain what it was, is they basically took this stirrup, which as you can see, this one's sitting 90 degrees to the horse. Normally when you get a saddle new, they're sitting pretty much like that. These have been turned from years of being turned. But what they would do is they'd actually turn it all the way around, stand in front of the horse like this, and put their foot in from the front, and then kind of spin around as they're getting up. I'm not even going to do that. I don't, I'm not even going to stick my foot in there. But uh, I hope you got an idea of what I'm talking about. The, the, the stirrup is turned, so it's actually facing completely the opposite direction. They put their foot in it while they're facing backwards, and then spin around as they get up. And so when they're done, 
That's the direction the stirrup's facing when they're on. It's facing back like it should be. Now, there, there's a couple of problems with that. And even just for the purpose of demo, I didn't want to turn my stirrup around because it might take some of the twist out of it. Because uh, this is something that is rather coveted on a Western saddle is to have a stirrup that's twisted. Uh, so that basically that stirrup sits at 90 degrees to your horse. Uh, twisting it around, I think, might undo that, especially if you put weight into it at the same time, getting onto the horse. I think that might be a problem. Uh, if somebody did that with one of mine, I'd probably be a little annoyed with them. Uh, took a long time to get them sitting this way. Uh, you, there are ways of getting them to twist like that, because when you buy a saddle new, they pretty much always come like that. They sit basically parallel to the horse. Ideally, you want them like that. Uh, sat, uh, stirrups that are fairly stiff and twisted like that, uh, any length of time riding in them can actually get quite uncomfortable, at least it can for me. So I like them like this. Uh, so I, I don't encourage doing that for a number of reasons, but oh, I'll say, I, I guess I should go on a little more about why it's done more frequently on, uh, on English saddles, or well, I shouldn't say it's it is done more frequently from what I've seen. It's certainly easier because they, the stirrup, or in the case of English, they call it an iron, is attached by a rather narrow strip that goes way up to here. So, I mean, you could actually turn that thing around two or three times if you really wanted to. It's not that hard to do. There isn't any really permanent position to them. Uh, well, actually, they would probably sit like that, but... We won't get into that. It is just simply something that is absolutely much easier to do in an English saddle. So that that's where that comes from. It's I've only ever seen one person ever do it on a Western saddle, and that was in that one video I just recently watched. Um, it would be difficult to do on a Western saddle, um, quite undesirable in my opinion for a number of reasons. But the reason that they do it, and this is one that one of the guys said, I have no idea why people do it that way. Well, the reason that a lot of people do it that way is they think it's safer because if you're up here you're not going to get kicked by that back leg well my opinion of that is if there's any risk at all of you getting kicked in the first place you probably shouldn't even be putting a saddle on the horse much less getting on it excuse me sir i know you're getting bored no you can pay attention good boy i think he's actually considering rolling and we don't want him doing that with a saddle on very bad for saddles. This one already got broke once that way. Fortunately, it didn't break the tree. But anyhow, uh, the theory is, keeps you away from the back end so you don't get kicked, but there's, uh, it just exchanges that danger for some other ones, in my opinion, because if you happen to get too far forward here, a little too far in, uh, they can strike with the front feet. They can, a lot of people don't realize that, but that front foot can come out forward hard enough it could break your leg. Uh, I don't think it'd get too much higher than about here, but uh, enough to hurt you. And, you know, like I said, uh, you know, they're trying to keep away from the back end. Well, if you're in a proper position for mounting, you're actually ahead of those le back legs anyhow. So, and I don't see how you can actually properly mount. Keep your weight tight in against the horse if you've got to spin around from here because your weight is going to be out further than it would be if you stayed flat against the horse in the first place, which is your goal, is you want to keep your weight in as close to the horse as possible so that you're not torquing on the saddle. Get to that part in a minute, but I'll talk a little bit more about this mounting from up here stuff, is you got the reins in one hand. Now, whether you got your hand on the neck or up on the horn or wherever you got it, doesn't matter. I don't care. I won't get into that just yet. Uh, if anything should go wrong, and that horse does move, which, by the way, is one of the things to mounting is you don't want your horse moving. But if it does move uh, and that shoulder comes over, it's going to bump you, knock you over. And as you fall down, you've got the reins in your hand. There's a pretty good chance you're going to pull that horse towards you. It's going to take a step towards you as you're falling down, and there's a good chance it might step right on you. And uh, depending on where it happens to step, that could actually be fatal. That, that could be very, very serious. So uh, not something that you want to have happen. So uh, this whole thing of mounting from up front here, I think that's a bad idea. It's actually a safety issue in my opinion, and it doesn't help you achieve what you want to achieve by mounting properly, which is to keep your weight in and minimize the amount of torque on your saddle. And I'm going to talk about a couple of things 
in that department here. And I actually, at one point, I'm going to bring another horse in here to show you something else uh, when it comes to mounting from the front. And uh, we'll get to that in a bit, though. But right now, and I'm also going to address something about your hand positions, because there's a number of different ways of doing it. I've seen guys do it different ways. And uh, one of the things you want to do is minimize the amount of torque on your saddle, the amount of twist on the saddle. Absolutely, no matter how you do it, that is, <coughs> that's one thing that you want to absolutely try and minimize is the amount that you're twisting that saddle while you're getting on the horse. And in order to do that, uh, you're going to keep yourself as close to the horse as possible at all times. And when you get up, uh, well, here's part. Uh, different people grab on to different parts, different places for different reasons. Uh, one that I think is definitely no-no is you see a lot of people grab back the saddle. That would definitely not be a good thing to do because you could turn and rotate at the same time if you do that. Uh, I did some mounting videos uh, in my training videos with this guy and when I got on him, uh, by the way I haven't ridden him, I have been on him but I haven't actually ridden him so that's one of the reasons I'm not getting on this horse for you today. But when I got on him, one of the things I did is I actually put my hand over onto the other side of the horse. I didn't grab the saddle at all. Uh, my left hand, no, that's another one. Um, well, actually, even the right hand, one guy, he was actually holding on to the horn. I don't think that's a good idea because it is up high enough. It can actually create a lot of twist if you do put any weight on it. So ideally, you don't want to be grabbing onto the saddle at all. Sometimes it's just a handy place to put your hands. Now, in the case of this little guy, uh, like I said, I've been on him. He hasn't actually been ridden yet. He's still extremely green. And if your horse happens to be green, one of the things you're going to do is keep the head turned while you're getting on. So you're going to pick up the reins, bring his head around. He, there we go. That's better. Now what I did, I'm probably going to be in the way here, is I, I actually put my hand on the saddle there. So, oh, he's going to move now. He thinks I want him to back up. No, I don't want you to back up. Good man. Is, uh, I actually had my hand braced on there so that I could keep his head turned. What some guys would recommend is actually holding that rein and the mane. Now, this is a little bit of a, I'll, I'm just going to give you a personal thing on this. Some guys, because I, I have not seen absolute proof one way or the other on this. Uh, some people say that the mane is just as sensitive as any other part of the horse as far as the air goes. Uh, other people say that the root system and the nerve endings in the mane and tail are different than the rest, and therefore it's safe to actually grab a handful of mane. It's not going to hurt the horse. Uh, I'm not convinced of that. I've never seen any evidence to support that. So I'm going to err on the side of caution. I am not going to grab that mane. But what I will do on a horse that is a little more seasoned, uh, not with this one, like I said, with this one, unfortunately, this left hand is going to be on the corner of the saddle because I'm holding this head turned and in order to keep it turned out I need to have my hand out a little ways but a better way to mount in my opinion and uh, what I believe is the correct way or the best way is actually if you take your hand and don't grab the mane but actually put your hand right over the neck so you're actually grabbing on the off side and use that to pull yourself up. I think that would be, that way you're not going to be torquing on the saddle. Uh, that's uh, the only weight that's going to be in that saddle is what little weight you put in that stirrup, which if you do it properly is going to be pretty much none. And uh, I've actually seen several demonstrations where guys have actually mounted onto their saddles without even having their cinch done up. And uh, what was really odd is the one guy actually had his hand up on the horn I don't know how he did that, but uh, if he could get on without a cinch, obviously he wasn't twisting that saddle with his hand up on the horn. So uh, there's a couple of things there is uh, this mounting from the front nonsense. I think it actually just exchanges one hazard for another. Uh, if there's any risk of your horse kicking at you while you're trying to get on, you probably shouldn't even have a saddle on it, much less be trying to mount it, in my opinion. And uh, you want to minimize how much you twist the saddle, no matter how you do it. 
So uh, ideally, uh, if your right hand, uh, I will occasionally put it behind the cantle, grab that horse, right on the horse. Another way of doing it is reaching across the seat, keeping your hand low so that you're actually keeping your, uh, the force down. You're still grabbing the saddle basically right about here, but on the other side is where most of your pressure is going to be. So, but you're keeping it low so that you're not going to be twisting the saddle. And then your left hand, well, that's going to depend. And uh, I've got a couple different scenarios that I'm going to show you. Like I said, uh, best option is if you can actually put your hand right over the neck and use the neck to pull yourself up, not the saddle at all. Keep hands off the saddle as much as possible. Uh, ideally, that's the best one. I wouldn't use that for this one, though, because like I said, he's green. I want to keep his head turned so he doesn't bolt and buck, get silly. Uh, that's not much of an issue with him, but uh, so in that case, I'm going to be holding it like that. My hand will be on there as I get up, but I'm still, he's still concerned about things a little here, but I'm still going to make every attempt to keep myself as close to the horse. Uh, one of the things that a uh, number of guys, you know, I mean, every, basically everybody says that. That's one constant in all the mounting videos I've seen. Everybody says you got to minimize the amount you're twisting that saddle. 100% agree with that. And one of the ways of doing that is, uh, you know, like I said, you got to keep close to the horse. And in order to do that, you will basically, uh, I don't want to do it with him just right now, but you're going to get close to the horse, get your knee out to the side as much as possible with your body as close to possible. This is going to be difficult if you're not real flexible, of course. But uh, staying as close to the horse as possible, you take your get your knee out as far as possible, and then bring your toe up, put it in. You know, you don't stand way back here trying to get your foot in the stirrup and then pull yourself up from two feet away from the horse. That's uh, going to be very difficult for the horse. So, uh, going to be difficult for you too, by the way. Uh, the closer you are, the easier it is actually for you getting on. So, uh, just thought I'd share that part with you, and uh, I'm going to go get that other horse and I'll show you the other little part I wanted to show you too. Back in a minute. Okay, welcome back. And I'll show you something else here. Uh, going back to what I talked about at the very beginning, uh, mounting from the front. I got a little demonstration here. See, this is a different saddle. Uh, this one has tapaderos on it. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a tapadero is, it's simply uh, a protective cover for your toe. Uh, actually has a couple of functions. It's in, the main function is actually to keep protect your foot uh, from brush and cacti, that type of stuff. Uh, it also has a secondary function is your foot can't go all the way through and you get hung up in your stirrup. It's kind of a safety issue. I kind of like these things. But anyhow, uh, rather than <clears throat> putting my foot in a stirrup to demonstrate something, one of the main things that you want when you're getting on a horse is you want a horse that stands still. And uh, there's a lot of things, you know, that can be done. It would take more than a YouTube video to explain. If a horse walks off while you're mounting, it's a chronic problem, actually. Or when you do get on, horse starts walking off. Horses that won't stand still while you're trying to mount. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. But I'm going to actually discuss a couple of the ones that are completely preventable that really have nothing to do with training. It's just you're getting on the horse wrong that causes the horse to move. And actually, I wish I had the camera just a little lower because right now it would be perfect to show you something else because she is not standing square. And quite often when you first get onto the horse, it will move. It will take a step one way or the other. And all it's really trying to do is get its balance, getting its feet in the position where it's the most stable while you're getting on, because all of a sudden it's got this extra weight getting on and rocking back and forth and everything else. So one of the things you can do, though, even though you can't see your feet uh, right now, and I'm not about to move the camera just to or back her up just for that, but one of the things you can do is you can actually rock the horse back and forth to get it to square up. Now, right now, you can't see them but her right feet are spread out quite a ways. Uh, the front one's forward, the back one's back, uh, compared to the ones on the left side. So to get her to square up before we even consider trying to mount, what we do is just push her a little bit side to side with the saddle until she decides to square up. Now, I didn't ask you to move forward, dear. Good girl, back, back, back. 
Good girl. And then we're just going to continue that. I don't want her getting too close to the camera. But you do that. She, I'm not going to do it hard enough. She might actually move where I don't want her to. But you can do that before you get on so that all four feet are basically in a nice rectangle. The front ones and back ones are even with each, you know, each set is even. And it's called squaring up the horse. Makes the horse much more stable, far less likely to take a step while you're trying to get on. Now, going back to the uh, bit where I talked at the beginning about mounting from the front, turning your stirrup around. Uh, this one has a tapadero on it, so it's actually going to simulate my toe. And it's going to be easier for you to see, a lot easier for me to demonstrate uh, without having to stick my toe in a stirrup. Is We're just going to pretend that's my toe right there, sticking out the front of the stirrup. The stirrup is actually right about here. And your, your toe, if it was in the stirrup when you're getting on, would probably be poking well through the stirrup and quite likely hitting the horse in the side. Again, you don't want the horse to move. One of the problems with mounting from the front, as you turn around, you start off from the front like that, and as you turn around, you turn the stirrup, and what happens? Your toe hits the side of the horse and actually tells the horse to move. The horse isn't being bad, not being difficult. It's got nothing to do with training. In fact, the horse is doing exactly what it's trained to do. In the case of this one, that definitely would make her move. So uh, that is one more reason why you do not want to mount from the front, because as you turn around, uh, you're going to be telling that horse to move while you're still trying to get up into the saddle. Not good. That's the exact opposite of what you want. You want a horse that does not move at all while you're getting on. Now this one, she's fairly well educated. I don't even have to hang on to the reins while I'm getting on her, which is probably a good thing. But uh, we have one other problem is uh, I said the best method is actually lay your hand over the neck. The only problem is with her, I can't do that. And so, you know, I'm giving you as many different scenarios as possible here. That's why I showed you that other one. And the fact he was green, we couldn't do that because we had to hold his head bent. So we had to have her hand up on the corner of the saddle. By the way, that wouldn't even work that well on this saddle because it's not as, it doesn't come out as far. Different style of saddle altogether. And if you've got an English saddle, it might be even harder yet. So uh, she will flex quite nicely, though, if I wanted her to uh, turn her head for me. She would very, very nicely do that. Uh, downside of that with her is as soon as I get on, she thinks if her head's turned, she's supposed to be turning. And she'll probably start turning on me. Don't want her to do that. So, unfortunately, one more problem. Uh, another problem is she neck reins quite well, and she's a very, very sensitive horse. So my hand pressure on the other side of her neck, uh, pulling myself up, makes her think she's supposed to turn this way. Just like neck reining. If, just like the, if the reins touched her neck, my hand pressing on the side of her neck is like an indication to move this way to her. You know, she's not being bad, but unfortunately we are, I think, I, well, I'm not think, I know I'm going to have to do a little bit of retraining on her with that. Um, probably one of the few things we really need to fix with her. Actually, it's not a huge issue if I want, unless I want to mount properly. If uh, I can manage to get on her without using that method, uh, it probably wouldn't be an issue at all, but in order to mount properly, um, I would actually have to put, in my mind, properly anyhow, uh, I would have to put my hand over and that would cause her to move as soon as I start getting on and we don't want that. So you know, that's why I thought I'd bring this one in to show you a couple of things with her is uh, because you don't want the horse moving when you're getting on and most of the time when it does move, it's just trying to get its balance. Get it to square up before you try getting on. Make sure all four feet are in a, in a perfect rectangle before you try getting on the horse. It makes it a lot easier for the horse because most of the time it's just struggling to stay standing up and not fall over is all it's really doing. And that's why it takes a step when you're trying to get on. And like I said, mounting from the front while well, I hear, you know, the, using my tap Daryl pretending it's my toe. One more reason why you don't want to be doing that is because you will in fact poke the horse with your toe because your weight's going to be out further than your foot so your foot's going to go in and you're definitely going to hit the horse in the side with your toe and if the horse has got any training or even quite often just on instinct alone they're going to move when it gets poked in the side with the toe uh, so you don't want to be doing that absolutely not uh, 
Like I said, that's something that, uh, as far as I know, is something that was uh, predominant amongst English style riders. And uh, very few people, I, I've, like I said, only that one video I've ever seen somebody do it in a Western saddle. I've seen quite a few people do it with English saddles. I do not encourage it. And the reason that they do it, I don't think, is legitimate because they, they say they do it for a safety reason. Uh, all I think they're doing is exchanging one hazard for another. So uh, do not mount from the front. Do mount from here. But, you know, stay ahead of the back legs so you don't get cow kicked. But then again, like I said, if there's any risk of getting kicked by your horse when you're getting on, you probably shouldn't even have a saddle on the horse yet, so, in my opinion. Uh, I certainly would not get on a horse that there's a risk of it kicking at me. You know, absolutely not. So, you know, but then again, when you're getting on properly, you're going to be far enough ahead that you're not going to be near those back legs anyhow. Like I said, you stay close, as close as possible to the horse, turn your legs sideways, and get up and in the stirrup like that so that, you know, your weight is as close into the horse as possible. Done right. You should actually, in theory, be able to get on your horse without even having your cinch done up. And I've seen it done a number of times, so I know it's possible. I'm not sure I could do it. And I wouldn't recommend anybody else doing it. That's something else that pretty much all of them said, too, is they didn't recommend you trying it. You would need an extraordinarily calm horse for it, to, for it to be even remotely safe to do. So uh, I don't recommend trying it. But if, in fact, you are mounting properly, it is, it is uh, actually possible to do it that way. So that is your ultimate goal, though, is you do want to mount in such a fashion that uh, you could actually get in your saddle without a cinch. So anyhow, that's uh, my take on mounting. Uh, ultimately, the same thing everybody else says. You want to put as little torque on the saddle as possible. Don't pull on it to get yourself up. Uh, you know, either grab behind or on the low spot of the saddle with one arm, preferably actually with this part here because uh, when you put your hand back there, you're going to have to move it before you can swing your leg over anyhow. So from here, it would be easier to just kind of slide it forward. It would be a little easier when you go to put your leg over. Um, I do not recommend using the horn, but if you can actually get in close enough to the horse to not pull on the saddle, which I have seen done, uh, I, I guess it doesn't really matter if you do do that. Uh, I don't recommend grabbing a hold of a handful of mane to pull yourself up. Uh, I do think putting your hand over the neck is a better idea because, like I said, there's no evidence one way or another whether or not that hurts the horse, and I'm not going to take the chance because I like horses and I don't want to hurt them, and I think that might actually cause problems if you do hurt the horse getting on it, that you might have more trouble getting the horse to stand still when you go to get on it the next time. So, anyhow, uh, green horses. Uh, most horses, you will want to actually have a hold of the rein while you're getting on. Green horses, you're definitely going to want to have that head turned. Uh, fairly well-educated horses, you may not need to do that. Still probably a good idea to have the reins in your hand. I have gotten on a number of horses without holding on to the reins, and they don't move if they're properly trained. But it's still, a you know, you can very quickly put the brakes on if it does decide to move. So anyhow, that's my little bit on mounting. Have a good day.